here we go with red velvet truffles. Start off with a cake mix. I'm using a spice cake mix. You need to use a light color cake mix. Uh, the recipe actually calls for German chocolate cake mix. Then you're going to prepare that cake mix according to package directions by adding the eggs, the oil, and the water that's listed on the back of the box. To this, you're going to also add one tablespoon of unsweetened cocoa and one full ounce of liquid red food coloring, which is about 30 milliliters. And then blend it up until it is well mixed. And then you're simply going to bake this like you would normally any cake mix according to the package directions. I would actually recommend the spice cake mix for this if you can find it where you live because it is actually very, very good. And it's very, it tastes kind of Christmassy because of all the spices in it. Now, once the cake is out of the oven and cooled, you're going to just pick it up and break it up and put it in a bowl. This is kind of fun, actually. You could uh, blend this with a food processor or with an electric mixer, I guess, to break up the pieces. Um, but it's also fun to do with your hands. It doesn't take very long. Now to bind all the crumbs together, you're going to need some frosting. The recipe calls for one cup of cream cheese flavored frosting. And one cup is about three quarters of one of those containers that I just showed you. And then stir together and you may end up switching to your hands at some point. And you're just going to mush it all up together until you get a mixture that's similar to, to uh, like molding clay. And yes, this is exactly the same method as you would to use to make cake pops, except we're not going to put a stick in these. And just roll them into little balls about one inch in diameter. You can also lightly refrigerate these just until they're chilled a little bit. Now to coat them, I'm using candy melting wafers. These little wafers I bought at the bulk barn. You can get them at craft stores or even online. And you melt them at 50% power in the microwave. These are candy melting wafers that have been melted. I've added a tiny bit of shortening to them to make it a little bit more liquid. And to dip, I'm going to use these dipping tools. Now, I bought these at the Bulk Barn. They're made by Make and Mold, which actually makes a lot of products to, for dipping, making candy. But you can easily make your own by taking a plastic fork, an inexpensive plastic fork, and just breaking off the middle tines to leave the two tines on the end. You get the same result and it's probably more sturdy because these are very, very flimsy. And actually this one is actually broken. I used it once and it broke. So I'm gonna try to get, you know, make it last a little bit longer. But they're very flimsy. And um, I paid like quite a bit for them considering what they are. And you can make your own with a plastic fork. So take your little cake bowl truffle, whatever you want to call it, goes into the candy melting wafer, roll it around a little bit, take it out and just gently tap, gently tap until most of the excess has flowed off and then you're going to put it on wax paper. In this case I'm putting it on silicone mat because they work really well. And then we're going to continue. Recipe says to try not to get uh, crumbs into your mixture, but it's going to happen. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a little bit of a little bit of melting wafer at a time, and if it gets too crummy, then I will pick. I'll just make some new. I'll just melt some new ones if it gets too full of crumbs. Now I'm making these for Christmas. So I am going to, before the candy has a chance, to, the candy melts has a chance to harden, I'm going to put some sprinkles on them. You could put also put some colored sugar. Just continue dipping and I'll show you what they look like when they're all together. And I'll also show you one that's been cut in half so you can see the inside. There you go. Here's just a close up of the process. You can also put them on waxed paper if you don't have a silicone mat, of course. And I also did them in red and green candy melting wafers, and you'll see these in the photos. Here they are. 
And here they all are, all on a plate. You can see all the different colors. I'll show you one that's cut open. You can see the texture inside. It's kind of smooth and velvety. And if you've ever had a cake pop before, that's essentially what this is without the stick. There they all are. You can see some to the side. Those are the ones that cracked. Now, what I did differently with this recipe was I froze the cake pops instead of just chilling them like I normally do. And if you freeze them, um, they expand when they warm up a little bit and they'll crack your coating. So I don't recommend you freeze these prior to coating them. Chilling them is okay. If you find your candy coating is cracking, then let them come to room temperature before you continue. Give them a try. You'll love them.